Hello, people. Welcome uh, back to your more design. Uh, we've recently met in December with the UX India International Conference, and it's really amazing uh, to be back here with yet another talk. Uh, welcome, firstly, to all of you. Uh, this talk, uh, as you know, is going to be uh, with Stephen Ivanov, who's going to be talking about how to uh, build a design system. And we are really excited uh, to have him on board uh, for our master classes. And before we get into his talk, uh, we would like to have a discussion uh, with uh, our founder, Mr. Bapu Kaladar, on uh, how we started uh, building uh, you know, the design school and what we are planning to achieve with him. So uh, he's already on screen for people. I'm sure everybody knows him. Uh, but Bapu, I'm going to quickly introduce you. Uh, so Bapu is the uh, founder and chairman for Yomo Design and UX India. And uh, he's been uh, very active over the past year and leading a lot of initiatives uh, at Yomo Design with the Yomo Unites initiative and, of course, the uh, UX India conference as well. Uh, he's also a great mentor. He's been mentoring uh, lots of uh, young people like myself. And I don't want to <laughs> talk more. Uh, welcome, uh, Bapu. Thanks for uh, being here. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you, Rohan? Um, uh, good, good. Good evening and good morning to all the people who are actually watching live. Uh, nice to meet you again. Great. So, uh, Babu, before we get into Steven's talk, I just want to have a quick conversation about the design school. I know we launched it at uh, UX India 2020, but uh, for people who couldn't attend, I just want to uh, give them a background on what we are trying to do and what it is all about. So uh, firstly, can you talk a little bit about how the idea of building a design school came into picture? Yeah. Uh, so the way uh, it's, it's been a long journey, it's almost like uh, 20 years. So when we started this UMO Design Foundation, the vision was to build us, you know, bring the impact by design through awareness and education. So we've done enough of, uh, you know, awareness campaigns. Like you know that UX India has been our flag flagship program, and Design X Social and so many other programs. We've been continuously, consistently doing it, and we also felt that, you know, design education is very important at the grassroots level, and that is actually one of our objectives. And meanwhile, we see there is a gap because design schools are not able to produce those many designs which we really need it right now. Around 1.3 million designers in India we need it. Uh, but there are a good number of uh, private institutes which are offering most of the times tools, not the design fundamentals. So we wanted to bring in that, uh, you know, a serious design education then learning by you know reading a blog or going through a video i thought you know very much a mentoring is needed and everything should be like a human to human connection so that's the reason we thought of you know bringing this design school and right now it's a pandemic is going on we're all now used to this online learning so i thought this would actually be helpful so we launched that school I think it's 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 been a great timing for us to go virtual uh, mm -hmm. with all that's going on and with also UXI20 being a great success. I think it's a proven model for us to go virtual and be able to deliver that quality. Mm -hmm. So uh, you spoke about a couple of objectives, right? So what is the plan here with Yomo Design School? What are we planning to achieve? So the uh, first thing is, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that design education should be affordable at the same time high quality education we're already uh, you know engaging with good mentors and coaches and design leaders and design heads and even design schools to actually bring in the quality education to our students so right now we are looking at two different aspects people who are already in design field to upgrade to upskill themselves we are actually offering master classes right now you see that there are six master classes which are actually four to five weeks and instructor actually will have 
almost like a one-on-one -on -one interaction with the participant because we are actually limiting the number of students to 20, not more than 20 in each batch. So that's the reason, you know, everyone will actually get the proper attention and mentorship from the instructor. The other one is people who are planning to get into UX. So we thought of bringing in high quality design fundamentals. So for example, when you say UX or UI or you know visual design, it's not just only teaching tool. We also have to bring in that you know strong foundation. So we have created eight weeks of strong foundation and then we actually modularized. If you want to be a product designer, for example, you have to do eight weeks plus, you know, you have four weeks of specializations, but you want to stop at UX design, do the four, eight weeks fundamentals and do the four weeks. And you can always come back and do the, you know, UI track or visual design track. So it's be making it very flexible and also at the same time, limiting the students, number of students, very minimal so that you know everyone will get actually one on one interaction and lifetime lifelong mentorship and they are also you know get access to other initiatives called like ux india you know design X social and we are also planning to have continue this you know talk series so you know all this you know, we are forming as a community uh, we, we are calling it as ufam so yeah. all of them will get all these benefits yeah correct so uh, one of our key objectives is also to build purpose-driven designers, and that's something we've been talking about a lot with mm -hmm. all our members. Can you yeah. please elaborate on that? So that's very important for me because I see that, you know, as a designer, I want to get a job right now or I want to get a you know, promotion. But more than that, I would actually see, you know, we all have to think a little broader than that. We need to identify the purpose why we have been you know doing this like why i want to become a designer identifying a purpose and solve you uh, know urgent problems you know screens and you know ui elements and all it's a day-to-day -day thing but you need to have a passion identify what's your passion and also identify the purpose so that is what we wanted to emphasize uh, in the design education and through your more design school Great. So uh, now I think we have a substantial amount of master classes going on, and we also have our full fledged certification course. So how was the process of you know interacting? I mean, I'm bringing this up because we have Stephen coming in next. So how was the process interacting with all these experts, uh, you know, who are ready to teach some amazing uh, things in the areas of design? How was the process like interacting with them? Yeah, so one is actually we, we are actually keeping it open for people to uh, you know, ask if you are really interested in learning from a particular mentor or particular uh, you know, design leader, or if you are, are interested in learning a particular subject, you know, definitely through our you know, foundation, we'll bring in you know, that person and then get the course done. And the process is very simple. Uh, you actually you know, register for this course and you will be it will be able to, you know, access. We'll be given a login and password to the school, and then we'll have, you know, a design a mentor or a master class leader. will be working with you through Teams or it's Zoom, and it's a kind of, you know, um, at least for like weekly classes we are planning to do it. And then the team will be working in cohort form, like you know, made them groups, and then they'll do a project, and then. Um, all these mentors actually will be uh, uh, know, giving you the access, free access to talking to them. And you always actually you know, ask them questions and then interact with them. It's like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship kind of thing. Am okay. I answering this question? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. No, no, you did. You did perfectly. So uh, I guess we are 10 minutes in and uh, I, I just wanted to make sure people got to know about uh, Yomo Design School. Uh, yeah. and, I mean, it's recently launched, so just wanted people to get the background. Uh, so I think we can get started with uh, Stephen's talk. I already see comments uh, coming yes. in. People are ready to meet him and talk to him. So yes. let's bring him up. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I know it's probably yeah. very early in the morning for you <laughs> in New York on a Saturday, but thanks yeah. for being here. Thank you and uh, talk to you soon. Okay, uh, let's invite uh, Stephen.
Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? Hi. I'm very fine. How are you guys doing? Great. <laughs> We're doing great, How's Stephen. Good? Looking forward to your talk. Yeah, me too. And um, I was actually preparing some of the content this morning. And I thought, like, what's the what's the best thing to say? Like, good morning, Bapu, for you. It's probably early morning in the US. Or good evening for Rohan. I know it's approaching probably evening time. So um, I, I really love this opportunity to, to be able to actually uh, share experience on a global level because uh, I, I believe that as much as I can share my knowledge and experience with design systems, I can also learn from others, from others are doing experimenting with. And I really appreciate this kind of a format that we're going to have a weekly live sessions, live sessions where we're actually going to be more kind of personal and discussing things as, as, as a group. Um, so I think that this format is something very kind of a, a disruptive when you compare it to other online educations because it's not just one way it's going two ways and we, we can really dive into whatever the audience needs to learn more about know more about or has specific questions so i've prepared a presentation and i want to um share it with you guys yeah uh, please share. Is, my, yeah. is my screen visible yes uh i'm going to bring you um get the screen up there okay, okay. yeah so, so Stephen, before you start yes. i'd like to give you a quick introduction about you i mean you're very, by now you're very well known in our umo community because you just gave a talk and people are excited about your master classes we've been uh, doing a lot of marketing and t telling a lot of people about your master class so let me quickly introduce you and then you can get started uh, we of also course. have a live live q and a session after this so people can post their comment on uh, wherever they're watching any social media or youtube channel so uh pe for people joining in uh welcome again we just had a discussion with papu and uh, stephen is here to get started about his uh, uh talk on design system so uh stephen is a master's graduate of rwth aiken germany in media informatics uh with a specialization in human computer interaction ux design although that's quite a long time ago but now he's currently working as a ux manager at infrasystics uh, where he leads uh, a team of seven and he helps define the experience and vision of products uh, from over the past six years so that's a little bit about uh, stephen and stephen the stage is yours and i'll talk to you soon during the q a Thank you. So, yeah, welcome to this webinar for actually building scalable design systems from scratch. That's uh, a masterclass starting in a, just a couple of weeks time. And I'm really excited about it because actually when I started my current, like working for my current company six years ago, first, I didn't know about design systems. I didn't know they existed. I didn't know what they were all about. But then from my Kind of current point of view i understand that that since day one because of the products we've been building i've been actually involved in trying to create some some systematic approach for solving qi challenges and um yes i've been i spent the past nine almost ten years in human computer interaction and user experience design but with my current company for the past six years we've been actually working on design systems one way or another and this is actually the current state of uh, our design system. So you can see that it's it's quite a big thing and it helps us actually drive very uh, consistent and very also consistent design as a process, but at the same time, very efficient design. And you can see that within this file, we have, I don't know, so many different styles and pages with assets and all of this actually, once we, we were able to build it, uh, an effort we started approximately three years ago. Um, now we're able to leverage the full, uh, the full, the full scale of design systems and have a much more efficient process to communicate with developers, to have the same kind of a language between ourselves. And we were able to actually also follow a process for, for building design systems, which is the process which I'm going to teach in this master class because. I know that it really helped us a lot and I know it's going to help you a lot. So the first three years I was working mainly on UI frameworks until we came to a point where we saw design tools maturing more and more. 
tools like uh, Sketch, like Figma, like Adobe XD started really delivering some real tangible value for designers. And we saw the opportunity through the technology they provide to actually be able to build and maintain design systems. So Indigo Design is our own system, the one we built. It's been going on this kind of a effort for more than three years now, and now we're more in the maintenance phase of it. But still, uh, as every system, it's, it's a living organism. It needs attention, it needs care, it takes time um, to constantly improve it and make it better and better. And basically, uh, I put this slide here because if you, if you imagine that this is six years of actually understanding the principles behind user interfaces and also building, maintaining and evolving design system, these six years are going to boil down into just five weeks of hands-on mentorship, interaction and discussion during this masterclass. And uh, yeah, I, I, I always like, like this phrase where like the only thing which is better than learning from your own mistakes is learning from the mistakes of others and the experience of others. And with this, with these five weeks in this short time span, I'm actually going to teach all those lessons learned, things done right the right way or things that were not done in the right way and caused some, some trouble. So actually, we're boiling down six years into five weeks and delivering them in this masterclass in order to enable you take the full leverage of design system for your design teams and processes. So I really like the definition that Ala Kolmatova gives for design systems, and it's that they are a set of connected patterns and shared practices, which tells us that everything in the system is connected. Everything plays with each other to, to give us the next level of, of leverage, the next level of components, the next level of patterns, because basically, we start with a very kind of a fundamental level and then build on top of it another and another and another level to have something which really gives us all the promises that design systems give, uh, which we're going to talk about briefly in a few minutes. But for me, it's very important that this is kind of a not just connected, but also we have this concept of sharing practices. We as a design team, the different units or people in the design team share the same practices and apply the same practices in a very kind of a consistent fashion because that's what the design system gives as a guideline. And at the same time, we also have the developers and other product roles in the product teams where we actually, by sharing our practices together, whether it's me uh, working in Sketch and a developer doing something in React or Angular, we, we speak the different we, we speak different language, but at the same time we speak the same language. We share the same practices through the design system. And that's why it's very important that the end goal of the design system is actually that it's meant to serve the, pur the purpose of creating a digital product. Product that solves a problem. Of course, UX gives us all the knowledge of understanding how to solve the problem and using different um, mechanisms to, to collect feedback and to understand where the problem lies. But then once we solve that problem with a design system approach, we're able to do this in a much more efficient and uh, yeah, in a much more consistent fashion. And for me, it's really important to think about design systems as a process and as a something that works as a system. So uh, from my first years in university, I was uh, doing uh, kind of an engineering uh, bachelor degree, and we studied a lot about systems. And I learned that systems always apply apply the same uh, kind of a processing over some input, and at the end, you have a very predictable output. And that's the goal with design systems as well, because whether you put some user feedback, some user input, some, some findings and research, at the beginning of the system, you you having a system, having a design system, are able to always get the same predictable output from that effort. And that's the that's the notion of, about design systems. And that's the way I like to look at design, because uh, basically it, it's, it's more predictable. And that for us as designer is also meaning that we can create more repeatable processes. We have really um, the opportunity to, to follow guidelines to follow best practices defined by this design system and to have repeatable steps every time whether we are solving a problem for one user need or for another 
we basically apply the same uh, logic through design systems to solve the problem. And of course, it's all about having predict predictable results because being able to have predictable results means that we will have um, probably fewer, inter fewer, fewer iterations of our design because they will use already some standards and user will, users will not feel so uh, probably frustrated by the next new thing. They will have something which is different, but at the same time feels familiar, which, which for me is what uh, is one of the traits of good user experience. So at the end of the day, we are, we are able to be more productive not just as a designers to create and get to the point where we can hand off the design to developers more quickly, but also having a design system that drives both the design team and the development team means that those guidelines basically reduce the need between us to collaborate all the time, to have meeting for the meeting after the meeting, to discuss the design and to explain to developers how things should be, because basically having a system is what defines how things should be. And we just kind of use the instruments in the system to have a, 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 a nice design at the end of the day, which developers can easily put into code and we have a viable product solving a real need. So for me, design systems are all about making faster iterations, experimenting more and failing faster in order to actually be able to create viable digital solutions to real world problems. and. The other important thing is that design systems come with a lot of promises. We always have the promise of consistency, of uh, having consistent elements in the interface all, all, all around the application, rather than having this button, which is slightly different than that other button. And then we have a, some third button, which is a completely different thing. With design systems, we just have a button. It can be customized, of course, it can be changed but at the same time, it's very consistent in, term, in terms of the way it behaves, the way it feels, and basically what defines it as a button. We also have the promise of being more efficient with design systems, and that's actually a fact because from my personal experience, I see how things that used to take maybe a couple of weeks time, a full sprint of design work, now take me and my team just a couple of days to design the very same experience to design the very same thing just with the leverage of a design system which already gives us a big arsenal of um, of tools that we can use and leverage and then comes of course the concept of clarity i i believe that this is more kind of perceived from the end user point of view because users who have absolute clarity about what they are seeing and being able to interpret and take action means that they will have less frustrations, they will be able to get to their goals much faster. And that's what the design systems and the kind of a defined way of doing design gives us uh, as a benefit. Another popular um, advantage of design systems is that they give us a lot of utility because we have a lot of tools and we, with those tools we can create our our designs, our product designs much faster and much better and have more kind of a versatility from picking um, different advantages uh, from example, for having interfaces that are suitable for a desktop as well as the mobile, just because the design system is built in a way which allows us to just quickly flip a switch and convert to something which is more appropriate for smaller screen spaces, for example. So utility, is something that definitely comes with design system. And rather than having a very basic layer of responsive design or something that's more fluid, we can really go to the full scale, full blown fluid design, which is really uh, exceptional and lets us create uh, mobile experiences from desktop or, or the other way around in just a fraction of the time that it used to take before. And of course, all, all about beauty because design is meant to be beautiful and the more consistent it is and the more clear it is, people tend to perceive it as more beautiful just because it follows some rules, it follows some logic and that logic, of course, means that things are perceived to be more beautiful. And last but not least is that design systems help us build more trust because people, as I told you, they may come to a unique experience, but at the same time, have many familiar um, 
feelings about that experience and have this very subjective perception of things that are more trustworthy, things that are more strong, more bound, more time proven, if, if you wish, because basically the design system is there to establish those standards and then use that standards to achieve also a level of in, increased perceived trust. And I already told you a lot about teamwork, but for me, it means that I'm not spending hours and hours of meetings with developers to tell them what my design was meant to do and say, basically by following the same guidelines and the same principles that lie in the design system, we're able to have a very common understanding of how things should be, why they should follow certain patterns, standards, and conventions laid in the design system. And that saves us a lot of uh, communication time back and forth, uh, which improves the teamwork a lot. Of course, design systems make designs which are much more scalable because basically we're able to establish more elaborate patterns, more complex screens, and increase the complexity of the design system just by making it more scalable and not more difficult to use. So we have scalability with ease of use at the same time, which for me is, uh, yeah, even if that thing alone is why design systems have to exist, it's still a big thing uh, for me because basically it, it's, it's a lot of value. And at the end of the day, it's all about robustness, about defining and using standards that are gonna make our software much more robust for, for, for the longer run. They're gonna give a lot more, uh, yeah, predictability and strength of following certain patterns in uh, a certain way. And with this, I wanna really talk a little bit about the masterclass because probably that's one of the questions many of the people watching right now have in mind. Okay, what's that process all about? What are we going to experience throughout those five weeks? And first, first things first, of course, is to create an inventory um, and this inventory, I was playing a lot of games as a teenager, computer games, and I always like to like stash a lot of stuff in my inventory. And with design systems, it's pretty much the same thing because we go through the different screens we have in our current uh, products and applications in order to be able to understand how we created and um, yeah, defined certain standards and patterns through the way we designed the user interface in order to understand how visual, how information is visualized, how space is being used, how different colors are used to convey certain meaning. And basically going through this inventory helps us to understand what we're currently using, what are the building blocks of our design and how can we make them somehow more standardized so that when we create a new design, it's something that looks much more uh, consistent and trustworthy than what we had before. In the second week, we're going to talk about some of the foundations of design systems. And of course, when we talk about foundations, I'm talking about things that you're probably familiar with from style guides, like, for example, typographies, colors, palettes, uh, different things like probably uh, the use of shadows to elevate content and make it pop uh, compared to something which is more like on the on the rest of the surface of the screen. Uh, using things like um, different roundings, different spacing and empty empty space between elements, within elements, and so on and so forth. So basically, all of those things are the fundamentals of the design system that actually, when when used in a very consistent fashion, help us to de to to deliver also a very consistent experience. And from third week on, we're actually going to be starting to build components, patterns, and um, screens. I I really like the approach that Brad Frost, another uh, big influencer on on me uh, when it comes to design system, he, he talks about this concept of having a chemistry approach to design where we have atoms that combine together to form uh, molecules. So if the atoms are the components and the individual input fields, buttons and other elements that are very, very kind of atomic paradigms for interaction, for collecting, for example, input, for input from the user. Then when we combine them into molecules, we start to, to um, create patterns 
uh, which are actually, for example, certain layouts of uh, cards or something which is like a small registration form or form where you fill in your payment details when you're making an online purchase. And that also is inspired by the inventory we created because in that inventory we saw what are the screens and the building blocks for those screens we needed. And those patterns start to become these building blocks, which again, when the molecules combine and um, become one living organism, we start to have different screens so that at the end of the day, our design system is going to give us the very same screens that during the inventory inspired us to start creating the system. And at the end of the day, we're actually kind of reverse engineering the whole um, the whole application, all the screens from our inventory by using the different components and patterns we created and building elaborate screens, collecting feedback from stakeholders and users and uh, basically doing design the way it's supposed to be done with the user in mind, with usability testing, etc. So as Brad Frost, I already mentioned him, said once, it's not just about using a design system, but it's really about creating our own system. And actually that's what inspired me to uh, accept the invitation of the UMO Design School and do this masterclass about building design system from scratch. The good news is that, yes, you have to build your design system, you have to maintain it, but I am here to help you, to guide you, to share my process with you and make sure that the outcome we have together is something that's going to be uh, robust and scalable for the future and it's going to be something that uh, you will definitely reap the benefits from. So. Join me from the February 13th to build a design system together. And uh, with that, I would like to turn the microphone back to, to you, Rohit. Hey, Stephen. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the amazing talk. And uh, thanks for giving a sneak peek uh, into your masterclass. We're so excited uh, to have you. And if you remember, uh, it was the way we went about inviting you was not very straightforward. Like we did put out a poll at UXI20 and people did respond very positively to that saying they want a masterclass after listening to your talk on design systems. So that, that was amazing. We're so glad we put out that poll and yeah. So how excited are you to give a masterclass? How do you feel about it? Well, I'm I'm super excited because I really see the, the value of having a design system with my team. And I believe that uh, what what earlier you had this conversation with Bapu and he said we need uh, more than one million designers in India. Like design systems actually let you lev leverage that because yeah we, we will eventually get to the point where we have as many designers as we need. But until we get to that point, designers like myself will always feel stressed and under pressure because of deadlines, because of many products they have to deliver designs for. And without a design system, that's really uh, a nightmare to be a designer because you have to invent everything every time. And it's really, uh, it's, it's probably frustrating. It's definitely, um, it takes a lot from you, a lot of your energy. And your the idea is that as designers, we need to focus on the right things. We need to focus on the users, how well we solve their problems and not focus on uh, the tools because just we don't have the right tools. And with design systems, I really feel that we have such a tool to do design faster, to iterate more. And um, that's why I'm so excited about because I know that yes, we it, it may take us 10 or 20 years to get to the 1 million designers or maybe a few million we need globally, but design systems are to the rescue because we'll be able to be much, much more productive and efficient as designers and actually, uh, have impact on more products. So yeah, that's a very nice question yeah, think, for asking. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the tremendous value, I mean, just, just by going through the short presentation you gave is the value is huge. So I can only imagine uh, with your masterclass, what are all the other uh, crazy things you can do with your design system. So, uh, so yeah, Stephen, so there's a lot of uh, mentoring involved uh, in your masterclasses, which is mm -hmm. Uh, very obvious, right? And you're, you're going to be mentoring people one on one. It's going to be a very small cohort. So, yes. can you give uh, a little bit of a sneak peek into your style of ma mentoring and what people can expect by interacting with you? 
my style of mentoring is is more like a leadership leadership driven mentoring so i try to let people uh try experiment uh before i give them the solution so for me it's important to actually once you're provided with the solution to have already a clear understanding of what what worked it what what didn't work and maybe you actually come to the solution yourself and for me that's very important because i see it also in my um in in my a role as a manager that with people you have to feed them little bits every time you have to give them some guidance and direction but not really tell them how things should be done let them let them try for themselves let them let them experiment for themselves and come to a solution which actually is uh even though it may be something that i was trying to get them to that point they still feel the ownership of 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 coming to that solution they feel that they own the path to their success and for for me that's very important because as designers we also have uh need to have this confidence that we are able to actually create solutions um for for whatever problems we face great i think that's that's amazing that you're going to give them such one on one attention and uh, get into the details of it that's really cool that's what we also want to achieve through this uh, masterclass so th- i am getting a lot of questions uh, uh, on your talk which i will get into uh, but you uh, clearly defined what in each week uh, somebody who's enrolling in your masterclass can uh, like an overview of what they can expect in each week right so can yes. you talk a little bit about how you're planning to make it very interactive and uh, the assignment part of it and the videos and how you're generally kind of making sure you are delivering the content in a very easy and digestible way yes so my my kind of firm belief for this masterclass is that it it doesn't have to be very the theoretical and talk a lot the the most of the most of the content for the masterclass is actually me sharing my screen uh creating a recording and explaining how how to do different aspects of the of the different uh phases of the process that we go through so actually it's going to be an experience as if you're making a design system on your own but at the same time being guided by someone on the things to focus on things to actually spend uh, kind of a more time or um uh, it, it it it's very kind of a um how to, how to say personal experience to create your own design system and in the master class we're going to uh, kind of combine into teams working teams but at the same time each person will have this personal experience of creating a design system defining the different characteristics of the design system for the branding for the components and yeah uh, basically the idea is to give you the freedom on one hand to to build something that will solve your own problem so maybe you are um working in a product company and you have a product but you don't have a design system so maybe you can use that product to build the inventory to create the fund f- foundations and the branding assets and then to start building your components and patterns and that's something that even after the master class will stay it will evolve more and it will help you actually to um to kind of integrate the whole systematic approach and the whole design systems approach into your design routine every day at work so uh but at the same time that's not going to be something which you do in a kind of complete isolation it's something we do together we meet regularly we give each other feedback and we discuss how things can be improved what should be uh, done probably differently um and yeah basically through this kind of a life interaction week after week after week we're actually going to create something that at the end of the master class is also um a valuable tool for for people to continue using and evolving so um yeah great so I, I, that that's that's amazing i think you answered a lot of questions there which are coming in so i'm trying to pick a couple of questions which are coming in from the uh comments from our people who are watching it live so uh one question is maintaining a design system is a challenging task uh, what are your thoughts around documentation and will you approach something like that during the class mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well it, it it's a funny question because my team and i we had a really big kind of a revamp of our design system uh just before christmas and we're currently just finishing all the documentation 
Um, so I know that with design systems, there are many ways to actually document the system and there are many approaches for doing so. Um, the one approach I actually find most useful and it's something that we briefly touch during the master class in one of the first le lectures and meetings is that we're actually putting some of the documentation inside of the uh, inside of the design system file because there we define for example the different presets we will have for certain uh, for rounding of certain elements or for the empty space we're going to use when we combine actually components into patterns so those kind of a um, documentation i feel that its place is to be in the design system because if it's somewhere else very frequently it may become um sort of design depth because you have to support uh and maintain not just one thing but maybe a few things but there are also many tools that actually are um letting you um yeah based on the structure of your design system have a pre-made documentation. So we're going to touch on that. For me, if a design system is built well enough and we're able to use screens and patterns at the end of the day, we don't need to have so many rules and guidelines because, uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're just going to be used much, much more seldomly than if you only have components. And for me, that's why it's important not to stop with the creation of components, but to go the next step and create your patterns, and then your screens so that when you're when you're starting to design a new product it's more or less like a whizzy week of dragging and connecting screens and thinking just about the interaction part not so much about uh how each screen is behaving internally great i think that that definitely answers the question and there were also a couple more on the naming aspect of things so i think that's answered great uh, so next question comes from yogesh who asks uh, what tool will be used to build a design system in your masterclass? That's a very good question, uh, Yokish. Uh, we're going to use Figma for the only reason that it's the one tool that you can use even from your browser. Uh, but everything that we define for principles and for processes working uh, can be used the same way in your tool of choice. So uh, I'm using Figma, Adobe XD, and Sketch at the same time, <laughs> supporting a design system in all three tools. Um, and for me, actually, uh, the three tools are more or less the same, uh, but we're choosing Figma just for the sake of being able to use it even from your browser. And so that's basically not limiting anyone uh, or actually tying him to any technology um, that he may or may not have. And we're going to use also the, the very free variant of Figma, um, but, um, yeah, for, for me, that's kind of a, okay, it will work for what, for what we are building. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, there, there are not some, some kind of a prerequisites. Basically you open your browser, create an account, and you can even stay in the browser for the whole masterclass, which is something I really love. <laughs> Great. I think Figma is the tool of choice uh, these days for most people, and it's, mm -hmm. it's easy to use. And I'm sure if you want to adapt any other tool, it's it's fairly simple if you get yeah. to understand one one tool. Yes. So uh, your your next question is: uh, Will the design system that will be building during the class be AA accessible for both light and dark modes? Yes, that's a very good point, and it's actually one of the slides in my first um master class session because there is another quote by ala komatova who says that design systems should be built in such a way that changing a few parameters of the design system should be able to affect the whole design in a very profound way and for me going from a light scheme to a dark scheme is exactly that basically you flip a few switches and you get a dark mode without any extra effort. And um, yeah, for me, that's the big value of building design systems in a scalable fashion, because whether you decide to change the brand or whether you decide to go from light to dark mode or whether you decide to, to change something else, it can be achieved very easily with just a few uh, clicks and adjustments and your whole interface and your whole components, patterns, and actually design of product once you start building it, are affected and uh, yeah, basically it's it's instant. It's it's an it's a no-brainer. 
Correct. So uh, that's that's great. Thanks for answering that. So your next question comes from somebody who's new into the field of design. Mm -hmm. uh, he says he or she says, "Can I attend the master class, or is it only for senior designers?" Absolutely yes. Um, you can attend the master class because I don't think a senior designer is the only type of designer who will be building a design system. Maybe a senior designer is more kind of a he, have, he has a better expectancy of what to expect to find in the design system. But that that doesn't limit this only to senior designers because also junior designers can contribute to a design system a lot uh, because we follow very kind of a atomic steps. We follow very simple steps. There is a very um, kind of a easy to follow process throughout the whole master class. So each master class session flows into the next one and into the next one. And uh, yeah, basically for, for me, whether you're senior or junior, whether you have experience with design systems or this is the first time you hear about design systems, you're equally well equipped to join the master class and uh, basically to, to reap the benefits of design systems. Amazing. So, uh, Stephen, while we are on this topic, uh, what can somebody like a senior or a principal level designer expect from your masterclass as a takeaway? So the biggest value I think and I see from people around myself building design systems is that at some point, uh, of course, I'm talking about senior people here, they get to the point where the maintenance of the design system becomes a big overhead and a big design debt for them. And I believe that with my experience, I can share the ways to actually start from scratch and do things in a very kind of a scalable fashion, which allows you to reduce this design debt and to actually um, not have to invest so much time in maintenance once you build the system, unless, of course, you want to add more to it uh, in terms of more components or new interaction paradigms, uh, I mean. So... Once you have a button, it should be there. It should be the button and it shouldn't change because it's meant to be clickable and that's it. Like um, my idea is really to, to teach how to do those things in a scalable fashion, to use the advantage of advantages of tools like uh, Figma. Of course, the other tools have very similar kind of uh, paradigms for design and things can be achieved in the same way. But uh, really leverage those tools to build something which is rigid and scalable. And for a senior designer, uh, it will save him a lot of uh, design depth, which I believe is something that we always carry with ourselves. So that's the biggest value for, for more senior people. That's amazing. So uh, your next question comes from Nishant. He asks, do you test out each UI inventory components individually or usability test an entire screen? or an entire flow? So usually users are not able to grasp individual pieces of the system. That's why we usually test the whole flow, the whole um, the screen. We test at the very end of the design system. But what we do as actually while building the design system is testing it with other designers to make sure that things are configurable in the way we want them to be. And uh, in Design systems are basically a tool that constrains you to follow certain standards, certain guidelines, but at the same time, they give you flexibility and productivity. So the way we test components is whether they're flexible enough for the needs that designers have. And uh, and that's, the, that's one type of test that I will kind of mention briefly during the master class, but I'm not focused on it so much because basically it's all about testing the system yourself, and then giving it in the hands of somebody else to to play with it, test it, and and see if there are any gaps or any any anything that is the, the design system does not let them achieve. So um, we have two types of testing: the one with users of the product is done at the very end, but the one with the users of the design systems, which are our fellow designers, can be started very early on. And uh, yeah, I would I would encourage anyone joining the master class to just test it themselves, test it as teams within teams and actually use this opportunity that we'll be working in teams so that we're able to actually work together and make something that's very, very robust and scalable at the end of the master class. Great. Thanks. Thanks for asking that, Stephen. So there is a lot of questions coming in about the master class. 
like the duration. So I was just going to answer that for you. I think it's a five week uh, mm -hmm. duration uh, for Stephen's master classes. Of course, there are others which are for four weeks, but Stephen's is uh, five weeks and it's going to be completely online. Uh, it's going to be a small cohort and you will get to interact with Stephen directly. Uh, we'll also post the link in the comments so that you can go through it and understand the curriculum and the course more in detail. Uh, so Stephen, for you, uh, the next question uh, comes from uh, on your design system, which you briefly showed in the beginning. So uh, somebody asks, how many people worked on the design system and from what disciplines? And was it a full-time effort by everyone on the team? So the fact with design systems is that usually when people start building them, uh, they can hardly earn uh, the acceptance from the other uh, stakeholders and their managers to do this as a full time. So usually it starts as a part time. And that's how it started for our company as well. We were we were two people in the beginning. Uh, I was probably spending half of my week on building the design system and uh, improving it. And the other person was also spending between 30 and 40 percent of his time every week on on doing the same and testing my stuff while I was also testing uh, components he built. So it was this process for maybe uh, yeah, four or five or maybe even six months. But we were very kind of new to design systems and there were not really many, uh, many kind of a courses or even information, much information about how actually to create the system. Like it was very abstract as a thing back then in 2016 when we started and we had to basically start then start over again and then we did this a few times until we actually had a very strong foundation on which to uh, build our design system but of course we also did a lot of research and um, basically by this master class the other nice thing is that you're not going to do research on how to create the design system you're just going to focus on how to create a system that gives value for your product. So um, which way it's better to define your typography or your palettes, it's not going to matter anymore because that's actually my learned lessons that I'm sharing with the participants directly. But they're going to be able to invest all of their time into actually understanding how things connect with each other and how they combine to form a higher level abstractions. So I would suggest that maybe if you're starting to create a design system right now, it should be possible to do it even as a single designer in not more than 15, 20 hours a week, doing it for a few months. And I believe that with this masterclass, we're also going to give you the tools to be able to achieve that with, uh, with the least amount of frustration and the least amount of uh, effort on your end, because yeah, you will you will learn from the experience of me and my team and also many other fellow designers who whom I've been interacting with. So I think that's a very great point you bring up there, Stephen, as somebody who's gone through that whole experience of actually building it and taking it live and going through that experience when nobody was talking about design systems. That's the time when you're actually building, right? So if you had some kind of a resource back then, you would have made your life so easy and that's what we're trying to do uh, with our master classes here where we're giving all the resources by experts who already been there and done that and we want to just make it easier for people right yes absolutely great so uh, i think we're getting a bit advanced and deeper into our talk i want to take a step back uh, because there's a very basic question which comes in here uh, which is what's the difference between a design system a style guide and a pattern library Mm -hmm. So actually, design system combines the style guide with the pattern library into the same um, kind of a um, thing, in the same uh, kind of a tool, but it doesn't stop there because as we said, yes, yeah, style guides, they usually give you some guidance, they give you some styles as well. This is also what design systems do. Um, but then those styles are usually on the level of uh, probably defining how things should look, not really how they should behave or how they should um, kind of act when they are used together with other things. And that's actually the value that the design system gives. 
On the other hand, the pattern library, it usually comes just as a pattern library that you can use, but of course, you don't have much guidance how to use it and how to leverage it. And, and here we're actually kind of taking the best from bo both worlds. We, we're putting it together in a design system and we're adding more into the design system. Like for example, the whole process of creating it, running through the inventory, um, analyzing um, different, different needs in terms of styles, in terms of user interface. And at the end of the day, being able to actually also um, do some user testing with it because that's something that's usually not there when we talk about pattern libraries or about um, style guides. They usually talk about building stuff, but not about testing it and evolving it and thinking about all of the aspects that that might bring back into the design system. So uh, yeah, I think that that should answer probably the question. Yes, yes, it absolutely does. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of questions coming in. I'm trying to curate it as best as we go. I mean, we wanted to keep it very interactive uh, so that people are able to ask as many questions as they can. So uh, one question which comes is if my organization wants to update the current uh, design system to a completely new one, how easy to update the current components? It really depends how they were built. And that's why uh, basically, by joining this masterclass, you will be able to understand how to structure things in the very beginning so that they are uh, scalable at, at the very fundamental level of the system. Because as long as that is, it, it, it is like that, then if you're changing the components or you, you may call it the system, but you may just want to build some new components or change some of the existing ones, and if you have a very solid foundation for that, it's going to be more or less like a piece of cake, a little bit mundane piece of cake to chew. <laughs> but at the same time, you will be able to actually uh, use that foundation and uh, yeah, have things happen in a much more efficient way. So uh, yeah, sometimes it may be even easier to build a new system from scratch than trying to change or adapt an existing one. But the best thing is that if you have an existing system, you could easily use it as an input for your UI inventory and, uh, yeah, actually save some time there when creating the new system. So, mm -hmm. Great. So I think we're almost out of time. So I'll take one last question uh, for you. Uh, will the system that we build be for responsive web or iOS or Android? If it's platform specific, will we adopt any native components? It will be more than responsive web. It will be very fluid, very dynamic, very flexible. And it's not going to be constrained to one platform or another because uh, design systems basically start with creating this inventory. And if you're doing an inventory for Android app or versus an iOS app, then maybe you will be a little bit biased to one of those systems. But that's actually something I'll leave it I'll leave up to the participants to decide. So every uh, every person will will have the opportunity to decide what inventory they, they want to create, uh, where they want to start from. And basically, um, yeah, this inventory will impact the, the look and feel of the system. But in the, at the end of the day, the design system is meant to, to be for design. So it's going to have uh, interactive components, navigation components, information visualization components that are there to serve the purposes that they fit and to fill the, the design need that they, uh, that they fit. So uh, I wouldn't say it's biased towards one or the other, but when it comes to responsive, it's definitely much more than responsive because we're thinking here about really making things very fluid and very flexible as if it was a real UI component in the browser, not something that's a design asset in the browser with Figma. Yeah. Great. Thanks for answering all our questions, Stephen. So I think there are still quite a few which went unanswered due to our lack of time. So uh, if uh, folks, if you are not able to get your question answered, please uh, tweet uh, to Stephen. I'm sure he's going to post his uh, Twitter ID or you can just look him up. Um, it should, shouldn't be very hard. So uh, I hope he'll be able to answer questions there. Uh, and for all of you who've joined us today, uh, 
to get to know Stephen better and get to understand his content for his masterclass better. Thank you for being here. I hope uh, you are able to get a sneak peek into all that's going to happen. And uh, we are really excited for it. And so is Stephen, uh, I'm sure. So uh, one really good surprise we have for you is for all of you who attended, we're going to be sending out an email uh, with a discount link, with a substantial amount of discount. So keep your inbox checked and make sure you uh, mark your own design school out of your spam box if you have, and you will definitely get a link uh, for a huge discount for you to enroll. So Stephen, thanks again for being here. Uh, I think we've done one hour and we've answered a ton of questions. Thank you for being so patient. Thanks for the invitation, Rohan. Thanks also to Bapu, and I'm really excited to see uh, the awesome stuff we're gonna build in the weeks of February and March. So yeah, hurry up because the spots are limited and I really hope you find your spot and we meet and we talk and we discuss and I get the opportunity to mentor you, but at the same time also learn from you. So see you in the middle of January, of February. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen, thank you. So we've just posted uh, the link uh, for you to avail the 15% discount. So check it out, it's in the comments and Thank you, and we will see you again soon next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.